Thank you, sorry for the delay there, but uh, first presentation tonight is uh, uh, to the Employee of the Month, Ms. Parish President Pat Brister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I present the employees of the month, I would like to tell everyone the sad news that uh, Ashton Daigle from our code enforcement department uh, passed away this week. He's been ill for some time. Uh, so please remember him and his family in your prayers. The services for Ashton will be tomorrow. If anyone's interested, we can get you all the details. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. And tonight we're gonna to do a little, uh, a little something different. We have two employees that we want to recognize as employees of the month, this month. We have been going through quite, quite a, a heavy loaded time right now in our IT department, as many of you know, with ERP going through and the budget and, and many other things. So they have been working so hard, all of them, but I wanted to especially recognize two of them tonight, if, if that's okay. So. Whereas, Regina Penton has been a dedicated employee with St. Tammany Parish government since January of 2007, first as the Information Services Secretary, then in May of 2011, being promoted to the Assistant to the De Director of Technology, and whereas David Kast has been a Senior Network Analyst in the Department of Technology since January of 2012, and whereas, through hard work and diligence, and most importantly, through collaborative efforts, Regina and David worked diligently to greatly reduce the cost of both the parish overall communications and its broadband services cost. And I will add right here just a, a little note. David, after many, many, many hours on the phone with AT&T, I think six hours today or in the last few days, has been able to cut our AT&T bill in half monthly in half. So he has truly gone the extra mile. And whereas Regina executes all administrative functions for the department and is instrumental in the successful day-to-day -day operation of the entire Department of Technology, and whereas David is responsible for the daily operations of the parish network, phone, and server infrastructure that is critical in the parish's ability to remain operational, and whereas Regina has a can-do attitude and has an extraordinary ability to organize effectively, communicate, and accomplish every task. And whereas David takes great pride in his work, is thorough and detail-oriented, and is exceptional in his ability to organize and accomplish his duties. And whereas Regina and David are overall outstanding and exemplary employees, and we are extremely proud and fortunate to have them on the St. Tammany Parish government team. Now therefore, I, Patricia Brister, as president of St. Tammany Parish, do recognize the hard work and accomplishments of Regina and David, and we are honoring them as employees of the month for August 2017. 
and encourage all employees of St. Tammany Parish to thank them for their contributions and commitment to St. Tammany Parish, especially during this time they've worked so hard. Thank you. And again, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I do want to take this time to thank all of the, the staff that have been working so hard on our budget and our ERP, that's, uh, our enterprise resource planning that is taking up so much of their time and effort. But it's going to be well worth it once we get there, which will be in about a month. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Susan Commodore, is she in the audience? Susan, you filled out a card, but you didn't tell us what you want to speak on. See Dean over there. Thank you. Um, the next one is a presentation about NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration, the grant funding summer program at Camp Salmon Nature Park. And uh, I'm going to introduce Sandra Johnson, and uh, she'll introduce everybody with us. She's going to make the presentation. So, wait a minute. Yeah, I got the podium. Ranger Ben would like to speak just a second uh, or so uh, on what the NOAA. BWAC grant was about, and then we'll proceed from there. Thank you. How do y'all do? Uh, NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, part of its mission is education, and they uh, offered a sizable grant for us to be able to use to uh, not only conduct the lessons, but acquire a whole lot of equipment and supplies, which we'll be able to use at the camp year in and year out. So we realized the camp is uh, ideally suited for this kind of a thing, and, and we had a, a, a estimated around eight to 900 students coming from uh, neighborhood elementary schools during this past couple of years. Plus we had a really fine uh, summer camp that we just did in June and, and July. Uh, we want to thank uh, the Grants Department, Ms. Beth Busy, and, and everybody in the administration for helping us land this grant and manage it. We got some, excuse me, some help from the uh, Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation and other groups that uh, stepped forward. So we owe everybody a lot, and it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, and this is John Paul uh, Douay, and he's our our tech person who's helped us do the the visual presentation. Which way? Way to open. Okay. You're ready. Uh, Ranger Ben Taylor and I and the entire staff of Camp Salmon Nature Park, the Friends of Camp Salmon, as well as the teachers and volunteer staff would like to thank the parish government for helping us obtain the NOAA Be Wet grant. We would especially like to thank Amy Clark, our Be Wet grant coordinator, for her support and guidance throughout our program. We would also like to thank the staff of the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation who has been in partnership with the parish to administer the financial aspects of the grant and for supplying us with teachers to present their watershed program. During the school year, we presented our watershed educational program to fourth and fifth graders in five of our parish schools in Slidell. Our summer camp program was offered free of charge to eight through 11 year olds three days a week for six weeks. An average, an average of 16 campers a day for a total of 43 campers attended our camp. Our goal was to help local students develop an appreciation of nature and a sense of stewardship and to provide real life scientific experiences related to our watershed. Through interactive lectures, demonstrations, nature walks, hands-on activities, experimentation and crafts, our students were exposed to many themes related to the wonders of our wetland. In our man and nature sessions, we explored human and natural history of our area, including Native American history and culture, the early settler period and the modern period of trade and industry. Of course, many of us can remember the Boy Scout era here at Camp Salmon before the parish bought the property and established our nature park. We also explored the theme of environmental stewardship, 
including the importance of recycling and composting. In our wildlife of our watershed sessions, we explored various animals found in our wetlands. We took many nature walks, looking for clues of their presence and studying the identification, behavior, and habitats of these animals. In our creepy crawly critter sessions, we explored the world of invertebrates, collection and identification of insects, spiders, millipedes, worms, snails, and slugs was always an exciting adventure. In our Plants of Louisiana sessions, we explored forest ecology and plant identification through our nature walks, leaf and tree bark rubbings, and tree ring studies. Emphasis was placed on the importance of our forest and of being good stewards by protecting our forest ecosystems. In our watershed water quality sessions, water quality tests and recordings were conducted by our students so that they experienced teamwork and practiced real science by performing test and recording data. Watershed activities and demonstrations explained our watershed ecology and the importance of preservation and protection of our wetlands. In our camp, we did many activities and crafts. Most importantly, we had fun while learning about our wetlands. I would now like some, to invite some of our campers to come up and show you some of the crafts that they created. Thank you very much. My name is Alex Merkel, and I made this um, bug box, and I painted the insides. And we also made some talking sticks, and we made animal footprints out of molds. So we put them, we had the molds, and then we put the glue in it, and we waited until it dried, and then, and then we took them home. Well, we painted them, and then we took them home. My name's Charlie Steele, and I made a wolf animal footprint. I molded it, and I painted it blue on the outside, looking like it ha it stepped in water. Hold it up so they can see. It. There you go. Hello, my name my name is Adam Merkel, and um, some other crafts I did was a raccoon footprint. And we also learned about how spirit animals can, uh, you decide what you are by looking at the qualities of the animals that we, that were on the sheet. And then you can choose like, or uh, the direction, like it's some lightning, thunder, and um, uh, your animal. I've learned a lot at Kent Selman. Hi, my name's Anthony Johnson. Uh, my daughter, Hannah, actually went to the camp, and I'm one of the teachers. This is the um, bird box that she made, the birdhouse. Uh, and they also made a clay pot, um, serpent clay pot. And then they made what was called a, a toad abode, which you plant in your backyard to uh, help toads live in your, in your area, in your house. So they all had fun. I was really uh, had fun uh, teaching them, too. Thank you. Is that it? All right. Thank you very much. Um, before I allow anybody else to speak, um, I'm going to tell you, if you haven't seen Camp Salmon, it's one of the jewels in this parish. Uh, it's open It's open to everybody who is in the parish. Uh, there's no cost to go out there. It's uh, got walking trails around the bayou and the marsh areas. Um, you know, there's a lot of things out there. Um, Leadership North Shore built a, a beautiful uh, playground out there that is handicap equipped. 
And so, you know, the kids can come out and enjoy it. And there's a there's a place for picnics and a, and a pavilion and everything to have uh, family dinners or lunches or whatever you're doing there. So it, it's a great place to go visit. I think uh, anybody that hasn't been there ought to, ought to certainly go pay it a visit and see what's out, what it's out about there. So... Yes, thank, thanks, Pat. I'd forgotten about that. Um, I would tell you that we are working with uh, people from Camp Salmon. TJ and I met with them, and we're trying to get the roof put on the old uh, Scout uh, Scoutmaster's building to preserve it. It's one of the historical pieces that we have around here, and we're trying to make sure it, it doesn't uh, just dissolve and go away. So with that in mind, uh, uh, TJ, did you have anything to say? You I know what Tal Adano is. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't didn't you? You're on. Can you need to turn it on? Nick, you turn. Oh, I gave him that. Now turn okay. There we go. No more, Steve, than to echo of what some of the things that we heard in the presentation. Uh, from of those uh, kids, you know, these types of program that NOAA and that grant has afforded us an opportunity to expose uh, our future residents of St. Tammany Parish uh, to some of the things that we enjoy today and many times take for granted. And all of these things, though, contribute to the quality of life that we have here in St. Tammany Parish from an environmental standpoint. And, 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 and listen to some of these young people uh, express some of their uh, ventures uh, at this camp kind of gives me an assurance that we can uh, look forward to them being great stewards of what we have here in St. Tammany Parish. Thank you. Now let me see how I get done here. Okay, Mr. Bender, you wanted to say something? Wait a minute, I'll get there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, make you aware, Mr. Chairman, that I am now here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm saying I, I'm now here. If you would mark me present, please. I apologize for my tardiness. And Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll also just say uh, our, our family, our grandchildren have used the Camp Salmon facility for birthday parties. They, they load the bikes up in the back of their dad's trucks and that nature trail, that playground equipment, as you know, is second to none. It is a fabulous facility. So I encourage everybody that lives anywhere within driving distance, go out and see it. It's great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And Mr. Tal Mr. Toledano. Whoops, I'm still getting used to it. You're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He's on. A point of... Wait a minute. Hold on one sec. Get rid of him there. Okay. Was that Toledano? Yes. This is a great system. It really is a great, great system. <laughs> point of personal privilege for the third time. I have one other presentation, Mr. Stavonsic, if you would allow me. Uh, yes, I will. We're going to leave you there. I am probably the most technologically advanced member of our whole council. I just don't want to display all my skill level at one time. Uh, you, you know, in a serious moment, first let me say this to you. If anybody ever questions us about what's happening to the youth of our community and the youth of this state, they need only look at these terrific kids and recognize that what we have here is unique, these kids are unique, and our youth is moving in the right direction in this country, and I certainly believe that. Uh, but I'm here to, to uh, come before you, which is sort of unusual because I normally sit with you, and talk to you about something that I think is very important to all of us in this council and this community, and that is, if you will recall in our last meeting, 
there was some slight indication of a friction between us, the council, the body government of this parish, and, uh, and our, our great fireman, uh, particularly Mr. Lorino's comments um, were, uh, I would say, minimally not well received by Chief Kaufman, and he responded only in a slightly less fashion than had Mr. Uh, Lorino criticized one of his firstborn children. Uh, and as the supreme commander of the uh, fire companies of this parish, uh, it is important to us to, uh, to assure that uh, those gentlemen are well thought of and, uh, and well received. And it was obvious that Mr. Lorino uh, and Chief Kaufman uh, hit it off very well that night. And uh, in great fireman fashion, I saw Mr. Lorino backpedal out of that burning building as quick as he could. So what, what this brought to mind, and, and particularly to my mind, which would then indicate that perhaps nobody else's mind in the world, was that they needed somebody to bridge the gap. Um, someone who could work through the issues, someone who could do so without stepping on toes, uh, someone who had some good rapport with the, um, with the various firemen. So uh, I was pleased to uh, have some of those individuals come forward, uh, and including uh, particularly the mascot for your fireman in St. Tammany Parish, a 14-year-old uh, Dalmatian. Uh, but together with other leaders of the department, uh, they have asked that uh, we uh, designate Mr. Mike Lorino as the uh, liaison officer for uh, the fire department and our council. And unfortunately, Chief Kaufman could not be here tonight. He had an emergency in, in uh, Slidell, but hopefully not a fire emergency. But he's asked that I make a presentation on his behalf if Mr. Lorino will accept this nomination. And that, if you would, Mr. Lorino, could you come forward? And this is uh, from the bottom of the hearts of uh, the fire department and its supreme commander, Chief Kaufman. This is going to be a little difficult to get out. Oh, I like that. This, this, this is their gesture for Mr. Uh, Lorino to hold. And they say that there's an advantage to this because with this screen here, there is less opportunity for him to put his foot in his mouth. Uh, <laughs> and, and in fact, uh, they will encourage him to wear it at all public meetings in the future. Uh, Thank you. But they, they offer it up in the spirit of good spirit and the fact that they are now working closely with Mr. Lorino and, uh, and Gene to uh, to bring all of us together uh, for what is a common good. So I had the privilege of doing this tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're now on the consent calendar. Any items not pulled from the consent calendar <laughs> are automatically approved in whole by one vote. Items pulled from the consent calendar are discussed and voted upon individually. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Dean, you have anything else pulled? Oh, I need to give you ours, I'm sorry. For ordinances for introduction, ordinance calendar number 5849, which is number three. Number four, ordinance calendar number 5850, and under resolutions, uh, C number one, C4846, number two, C4847, number five, C4850, and number 10, C4855. Mr. Dean, you have anything else? Mr. Thompson. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Fitzgerald. Mr. Thompson. Mr. Lorino, no, Mr. Toledano, Mr. Sponsic, Mr. I, I'd like to pull uh, on the ordinances for adoption number 16, 
calendar number 5844, please. Um, is it for adoption? It, it is for adoption. Then you can talk about it when we get to adoption. Okay. We don't pull those. Thank you, thank you very Thank you. much. Uh, Mr. Tanner? <laughs> Pulled ten. We pulled ten. I'm gonna go on down the line when you get ready. Okay, you got it. Okay, Mr. Roby, Mr. Canulet, Mr. Belisario, Ms. O'Brien, Mr. Bender, Mr. Smith. Okay. Seeing none, I need a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Motion by Mr. Tanner, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Guys, you got to hit your button to remember that. Okay. Any uh, any discussions on the consent calendar? Please vote. For some reason, he's marked absent. Mr. Toledano, by verbal vote, has voted yay. The motion passed is unanimous with no one absent. Thank you. Please, uh, please, Mr. Lorino, send him back out there and, and you punch him. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ordinances for introduction, ordinance calendar number 5849, ordinance uh, adopting and enacting a new 2017 code of ordinances. Um, I think we have to do an amendment. Who has the amendment? It says amend and then reintroduce. Mr. Hand, let me see. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, it's on now. We have an amendment to the ordinance, and it's basically some language that assists us in making the transition over uh, while preserving uh, what we currently have uh, going forward, and uh, particularly those items that have been adopted since March. Uh, of 2017 uh, are going to still be in effect, although they'll appear actually in the first uh, supplement to the to the uh, code of ordinances when it's actually published. You know, so that's what the amendment is dealing with. So Thank it needs you, to Mr. be amended Hand. and reintroduced. Okay, Mr. Tanner. I move to uh, amendment amend it and uh, reintroduce. Okay. Motion by Mr. Tanner, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Um, any any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, please vote. Please vote. I know we're waiting. Motion was unanimous, no one absent. Now, now motion to introduce. Okay, motion by Mr. Seconded by Mr. Groby. Um, that's all we have to do there, no, we're just introducing. <clears throat> okay, ordinance count number 5850. Hold on a second. Who needs to be recognized? Mr. Go ahead. Oh. Thank you. Um, 
Mr. Stefanczyk, it's also asked that the council refer uh, this matter to both the Zoning Commission and the Planning Commission uh, for their review of the new um, um, land development code, which is part of the new code. Okay. So um, before we go any farther, Ms. O'Brien. All right, Mr. Belisario made a motion seconded by Ms. Blanchard. We're getting there. Uh, any discuss any dis discussion on the motion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous. No one absent. Okay. Um, Next one is Resolution C-4846. Uh, I need a, uh, Ms. O'Brien, you have a motion? Ms. O'Brien? Okay, finally got it on. I want to move to postpone one month, please. Number four, ordinance calendar number 5850. Move to postpone one month. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Fifty-eight fifty. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll second the motion. You're, you, this is the one we just amended, right? So you're. No, sir. This is not the one we just amended. The it's okay. the next one. Fifty-eight fifty. Okay. Um, so you want to move to postpone? Yes, and sir. Seconded by uh, Mr. Belisario. Any discussion on the motion to postpone? Seeing none, please vote. Mr. Canulet. Motion is unanimous with no one absent. <laughs> Next one is um, uh, C4846 resolutions. Um, where are we here? It's a resolution approving the holding of election and recreation district number 14. Uh, to authorize the incurrence of debt and issuance of bonds. Need a motion to put it on the floor. Mr. Lorino moves, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? I think we have our bond council here. Do you need to say anything? Okay, thank you. Um, any further discussion at all? Seeing none, please vote. Mr. Tanner. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Resolution number CS4847, uh, resolution uh, re ordering and calling a special election to, that can't be right, the special election to Lighting District number six, to authorize the levy of a special tax. Motion by, did you push your button? There you go. Motion by Ms. Blanchard, seconded by Mr. Groby. Okay. Any discussion on this? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Next one is item 10, um, resolution number C4845 to accept ownership of portion of the state routes. Uh, I, I have a motion to. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to number five. Uh, resolution number C4850, a resolution to establish performance and warranty uh, obligations. Um, I think we have to amend this and say uh, it's a change phase B to phase A and then adopt. That's what I understand we're wanting to do, not, or I think that's where we're headed. Uh, Mr. Tanner, you move to, um, you move to amend? Move to amend and adopt. Seconded by? Seconded by Mr. Bender. Any discussion? Please vote. Mr. Bender, Mr. Smith. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Okay, item number 10, resolution to accept ownership portions of state routes and the routes are listed LA 1084, 10, 1077, and 434. Um, motion by Mr. Tanner, um, seconded by Mr. Balasario. I think that's to remove, right? Yeah. Okay, motion to remove by Mr. Tanner, seconded by Mr. Balasario. Any discussion on this motion? Please vote. Mr. Belisario? Motion is unanimous, no one absent. We're now going to appeals. Right, is that the last one? Yes. Nope. What's this? to appeals and I would remind people on the appeals you have 10 minutes to present your case you have three minutes for rebuttal and if there's a opposition and we ask either side any questions you'll have two more minutes to summarize so uh, Ross Christian appealing the zoning commission's approval on February 7 2017 for major amendments to the PUD of 92.61 acres located north of Interstate 12, west of Holiday Square Boulevard and south of Versailles, subdivision Ward 3, District 5. Do I have Mr. Christian here? Uh, Mr. Stefanczyk, uh, I... Uh, Just a minute. Okay. Good. Is there any button I need to push right now? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Mike Owen. Uh, Mr. Stefantek, thank you very much. As uh, our members might remember, I've been working with this Versailles group and the developers to uh, uh, close out many issues in this matter. Uh, we probably started with 100, so to speak. We're down to one. I'm going to move to postpone again tonight. That issue should be clarified and, and completely resolved before the next meeting. So on that basis, I would ask that you favorably consider postponing it. So move. Thank you. Motion by, motion by Mr. Toledano, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Okay, uh, second one is uh, Jason Van Har Van Halen appealing the Zoning Commission denial on July 5th, 2017 to rezone one, is that 1.835 acres located on northeast corner of 6th Avenue and Seoul Ave Avenue from A2 Suburban District to A4, A Single Family res Residential District Ward 3, District 5. Mr. Toledano. Just a minute, I screwed up. It still says Mike Owen. No, it says Mike Owen. Mike Owen. There, there's, I believe some of my equipment has been sabotaged before the meeting started. But in the spirit of uh, 
not keeping Mr. Thompson here too very late. I should tell you this man is first impression here to us on this uh, commission. I've had a community meeting and, well, actually two community meetings. There are some issues that are uh, outstanding on this. On that basis, I've told all the parties had interest, i.e. the developers and the community uh, residents that I would move to postpone it tonight and I so move. Motion by Mr. Toledano, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion on the motion to postpone? Does Mr. Thompson, do you want to speak? No. Mr. Lorino, do you want to speak? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. We go to the ordinances for adoption. Ordinance count number 5803AA, ordinance to amend the subdivision ordinance relative to administration, approval of minor subdivisions north of the urban growth boundary line, uh, introduced 5417 and referred to Zoning Commission. Zoning Commission approved. Um, Mr. Tanner, uh, well, wait a minute. Let's let's go to the audience first. Uh, Carla Hernandez. Now do I turn on that mic? Thank you. Thank you, Carla Hernandez. I am here to um, recommend that the council adopt this version made by the Planning Commission at its last meeting. I believe this version has improvements from the ordinance first introduced by the Parish Council. This ordinance deals with administrative approvals of minor subdivisions. The administrative, administrative approvals process means that the staff of the planning and zoning departments, or as now called the Department of Planning and Development staff, makes the, recommend, the determination on the request. This administrative approval section has a unique procedure which requires written notice to the Parish Council at least five working days prior to the granting of the administrative approval of any such application. This is the only administrative permit with such a procedure. There are a number of administrative permits with such a pro which allow for administrative consideration of the permits. And I would ask that the Parish Council look at the other administrative permits to see whether they want to have the same type of procedure which this particular section uh, does, which I think is the only one in uh, the entire uh, Code of Ordinances, uh, dealing with the fact that it allows the Parish Council to uh, review. It has five working days to review the um, the. Um, uh, the, the notice from the, from, the, from the staff of the Planning Commission that such an administrative uh, permit is being considered. Um, and, and the five days obviously allows for the Parish Council if they have comments or, or questions regarding the, uh, um, the, this uh, application to, uh, to address those, hopefully. I am again requesting that the public be provided with an online list of all administrative permits approved. I have made this request in the past. I'm still waiting to, uh, to see this online and I have yet to, to see it. I want to thank you for your consideration and hope that you adopt this ordinance. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Seeing none, Mr. Tanner. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend this ordinance uh, that we have in our packet to reflect what was passed by the Planning and Zoning Commission and and. And introduce again, right? No, and adopt. It's minor, minor changes. Okay. So motion by Mr. Tanner to amend and, and adopt uh, with, the, uh, with the amendments that they have, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Belisario, you want to say anything? No, I'm good. It's Mr. Bender? No, sir. Uh, on down the line, Mr. Thompson? Mr. Smith, you're slow at, so, sorry about that. Mr. Groby? I called Smith, yes. 
He's on. Oh, he was on. Wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Smith, hit your button for me. Request to speak, Mr. Smith. We're learning. All right. And now turn your mic on. Testing. Wow. I forgot what I wanted to say, man. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure I understood Mr. Tanner's, Mr. Tanner's motion, okay? His mic wasn't off for one thing. But uh, Mr. Tanner, I'm sorry, to the chair, uh, in consideration of what we just heard from uh, Mr. Hernandez and his, his suggestion, uh, are you, your motion is not considering that it is to go with what the Planning Commission offered only? Uh, Once you give what, what? up, guys, when you ask a question, you give up the floor. Pardon me? I said when you ask a question, you give up the floor. If I turn the mic over to somebody else, that's you fine. lose the mic. That's fine. It's just a point of information, so I don't mind okay. turning it over. So I'm going to go down the line. Uh, Mr. Smith, I'll give it to the next one line. Mr. Thompson. Okay. Uh, I got, now Mr. Tanner is still on there for the next one. Uh, okay, there you are. What we are adopting is the same thing that Mr. Hernandez said when he got up here and spoke. It's what was passed by the Planning Commission. The, the uh, ordinance that was in there, ch we changed one thing. It was from... Uh, three parcels to five parcels. Other than that, that's the only change in the uh, ordinance. Okay. Mr. Belisario. I was just going to clarify the point, and Richard took care of that. The mic is on. Now it's on. <laughs> yeah, I was just clear. I was going to clarify, and, and Richard has done that, uh, so my second goes to uh, accept the amendment. Let's vote. Okay. Anybody else? No. Please vote. Motion is unanimous. No one absent. Thank you. Ordinance count number 5830 to extend for six months the moratorium on property within a defined area within North Street, Harrison Avenue, Ravine Street, and Ike Street, and Fuchsia Street, Ward 3, District 5. Mo Mr. Tanner, motion by Mr. Tan uh, Toledano, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any, any discussion? S seeing none, please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance count number 5831 to name the Madisonville Library branch of the public library to honor of former Mayor Peter L. Getz. Motion by Mr. Lorino, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Any discussion on the motion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. N number four, ordinance calendar number 5832, ordinance establishing O2 Trucks Zone on St. Tammany Avenue, Ward 9, District 14. Motion by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Bender. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5833, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 157.31 acres from a PUD to A4, A5, and HC2, Ward 1, District 3. Motion by, motion by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Even though you didn't push your button red, I'll give you that. Second it, okay. Any discussion? Please vote.
Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5834, ordinance amending official Perry zoning map to reclassify. Well, I just did that one, right? No, I didn't. To reclassify 157.31 acres from a PUD to A4A5HC2 in a PUD, Ward 1, District 3. Motion by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5835, amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify three acres from PUD to A1, Ward 1, District 3. Motion by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any discussion? Please vote. Mr. Lorino. Mr. Thompson, you changed your vote. <laughs> Motion is, is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance count number 5836, amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify three acres from PUD to A1, Ward 1, District 3. Motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. I'm gonna give Dean this one. Second by Mr. Dean. You gotta push it a little bit faster though, Marty. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance count number 5837, amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify one acre from A4 to HC2 and entertainment overlay weight, Ward 8, District 13. Motion by Mr. Ms. Ms. Blanchard. A motion to remove by Ms. Blanchard, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Ms. Blanchard. Okay, any, any, any discussion? Please vote. Motion is to remove. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance count number 5838, amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify 146.3 acres from A2, R, O, R, O and MHO to A2 and RO, Ward 10, District 6. Motion by Mr. Tanner, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5839, amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 2.81 acres from A2 to A2 and MHO, Ward 6, District 11. Somebody, motion by Ms. Blanchard, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any, any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5840, amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify 5,900 square feet from A3 to A3 in MHO. Um, Ward 8, District 14. Motion by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance count number 5841, amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify three acres from A1 to A1 and MHO Ward 2, District 3. Motion by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any discussion? Please vote. Mr. Smith. 
Mr. Teledano? You only need to hit it once. <laughs> While it's blinking, you will change your vote if you hit it again. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5842, a more ordinance amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify 10.64 acres from A1 and MHO to A2 and MHO Ward 2, District 6. Motion by, Mr. motion by Mr. Toledano. No, 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 no. Um, no, motion by Mr. Tanner. Seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Ordinance calendar number 5843, amending the official Perry zoning map to reclassify 57.75 acres from A3 and I1 to A3 and I1 Ward 4, District 5. I have two cards for this to speak on it. No, I will not. I have two cards to speak on this. Um, Ms. Susan Commodore. You have to come to the microphone up there. I would like Mr. Toledano to speak first. Mr. Stefanzi, I have just recently been presented with uh, some issues from the neighborhood, including. I'm sorry. It says Michael. He's helping me. I'm helping. I've recently been presented by uh, various neighborhood residents that there are some issues or questions that they would like answered uh, prior to this being adopted in fairness to them. Uh, although it, it is the 11th hour, I am going to move to postpone this to the next meeting. And at that time, we'll endeavor to meet with Ms. Commodore and the other nice residents of the community and uh, the representative of the developer, who I believe Mr. Marone is present in, in the room, and hopefully work through those things. So on that base, I'm going to move to postpone. Um, before I allow the motion to postpone, I'm going to call on um, Peggy Chestnut. Okay. You're with her? Okay. Well, there's both of us that live on the road, so um, the majority of the reason that we are both here to speak is because of the subdivision and uh, not knowing the impact prior to finding um, the, the, court, the uh, covenants. First of all, good evening. Thank you all for having me. Second of all, um, it was an impact that I wasn't aware of, and it's taken me a bit of uncovering to actually see what and how it's going to impact me. I've been a resident here since 1968, um, and the road that I'm speaking of, which is Dove Park Road, was a gravel road when I first came over. So progress has been made, and I understand that progress will continue to be made. I, as a resident of this particular area, um, which is rural, um, has the impact of this particular subdivision that will butt up against the property line, and my present private drive would be uh, met by the backs of 15 different homeowners. And it says here in the covenants, or in the initial paperwork, that they are allowed to build a a building five feet from the property line that could be as high as 19 feet. For me, if you could see where my home is, it it would be like straight up down the side of my road. So all I was asking for, I, I'm not opposed to development at all. Um, I would like it to be constructive development. And in my respect, I would like to have a buffer or a green space, which has not really been allowed um, to this. So I would meet, and it doesn't call for a fence. So there would be no protection to me from a whole row of subdivision and neighbors and noise and all of the things that go along with progressive subdivisions. Um, there are just things that I would like to know prior to saying that this is all okay. If somebody you know, would be willing to tell me this and show me what's happening, um, that would be wonderful. I did ask and I did inquire and I did call the developer, Mr. Herberger, of which I did not get a phone call back from. So I'm doing the best I can. 
um, a bit limited, and I do work in the city uh, five days a week. So I'm, I'm asking for you to table this this evening and just allow me some time uh, to get to know really what, how, how this is going to impact me. And if, they can, if we can come to a wonderful agreement and be happy. Thank you. Um, Mr. Toledano, you want a motion to postpone? I, I do so move. Uh, seconded by Mr. Thompson. Mr. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Chestnut. you want to speak as well? Um, at, I'm Peggy Chestnut, and I'm also a resident of the lane, um, Dove Park Lane. Um, the place that we live, Susan and I, and Charles and uh, Yvonne <laughs> and Max, <laughs> um, is... It is a migratory bird estuary. Um, I'm glad the kids were here talking about the animals and preserving camp salmon. Uh, it's also home to a lot of other wildlife that I've seen, gray fox, rabbits, white little spotted fawns that grew into handsome bucks, Madam, I need to stop you just a second. The motion is to postpone. Are you you're not speaking on the motion to postpone? Sure, uh, I want it postponed until they oh, decide to put a okay, green space that's fine. up. That's what you should be speaking on. Okay, well that's what I want. And all I have to say on that matter is if I can find it in my own messy writing. Okay. Please don't let the rear end view of 15 homes with the rear end view of 15 outbuildings at the rear end of the rear ends of the lots facing our beautiful lanes be put in without a green space. That's all. Thank you. Motion on the floor is to postpone. Uh, it was seconded by Mr. Thompson. So any further discussion? Um, Mr. I think we're Mr. Belisario. Call for the question. Ms. Mr. Belisario. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I've just been sitting here patiently. I just been here sitting here patiently. Uh, what is it, right? What is the specific issues that you're tabling? It just the one issue. Stop a minute, guys. You got to. You're giving up the floor then? Sure. Okay. Can you hear me now? I haven't turned you on yet. Mr. Toledano. My machine comes on and says, mic off. I'm sorry. That's, it sits mic off, so I don't know what the heck to do. But anyway. We're mic on now. Here's my best answer on that. The, the nice people that spoke tonight, I have not spoken to them before. This matter uh, went through the planning commission, uh, I believe, I believe unanimous, unanimously. So quite frankly, I had not uh, had occasion to speak to any of the neighbors about it. It did not appear to me there was any opposition. And, and quite frankly, I don't necessarily here, Ms. Commodore indicating she's opposed to it, but she has some reservations about it, understandably so. Uh, I don't think anybody is uh, out of pocket, lost or behind eight ball by postponing it uh, one month, hopefully. Uh, I intend to meet with Ms. Commodore and the representative of uh, the developer and hopefully resolve it. Uh, but I'm not prepared to do that tonight. And in fairness to these people, I, I, I can't really speak to the issues that they raise. So I, I think to postpone it would be appropriate and fair. And to my knowledge, it has not been postponed before. Okay. Mr. Canulet. Yes. So um, I heard Ms. Commodore talking about covenants. I just want everyone to be clear on this unless something has changed and I don't, I don't think it has we do not enforce 
neighborhood covenants. Is that correct, Terry? So if it's a covenants issue, you're y'all gonna need to get with the right people on that. It's a setback issue. It's a development issue. Uh, okay. Y'all y'all did say covenants when y'all came up and spoke. So I just want everyone to be clear on that that we do not enforce the covenants for the neighborhood. Thank you. Any any further discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Ordinance calendar number 5844, amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 57.7 acres from A3 and A1 to A3, I'm sorry, A3 and I1 to A3, I1 and PUD, Ward 4, District 5. This is the same thing, right? Mr. Toledano. Mr. Toledano, if you push it, there you go. Okay. I got the mic right this time. I'm so very proud of myself. Uh, for the same reasons that we spoke about before, I'm going to move to postpone this. Yes. Thank you. And, and seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Um, Motion is unanimous, three absent. Okay. Uh, the next one is ordinance calendar number 5845 to amend the 27, uh, 2017 operating budget, uh, number eight. Motion by Mr. Tanner, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? Please vote. Mr. Lorino and Mr. Toledano, I hit my button too quickly. What is your vote on this matter? Motion is unanimous, three absent. Okay. Ordinance calendar number 5846 to amend uh, ordinance calendar series number 12-2871 to reclassify 53.5 acres to PUD planned union development overlay to provide major amendments to original PUD plan Ward 1, District 3. Motion by Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Lorino. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, three absent. Push your button. Uh, Mr. Belisario, do you have anything? Okay, this is, it's not going to be a motion yet, but um, motion by, um, well, I'm going to have Ms. Blanchard. Go ahead. We need to, I'm going to need a motion for reconsideration on item number nine, number 5837. Again, that's item number nine, 5837. I need a motion to reconsider. Do I need to do it in two motions, a motion to reconsider and then a motion to postpone indefinitely? Yes. Okay, so I need a second on the second motion to reconsider. Second on Mr. Belisario. Uh, now, you want to? And then I would like to make a motion to postpone this item indefinitely. Okay, motion by Ms. Blanchard, seconded by Mr. Lorino. She's, we're going back and taking it, you know, it was. Uh, it was a motion to remove. It has to be changed from a motion to remove to a motion to postpone indefinitely. Right. She's just postponing it instead of removing it. That's number it's, nine. It's not it's a resolution. Calendar. 
ordinance yeah. number, it's item number nine, ordinance 5837. Senator it's been pulled up yeah. on the screen. Any further discussions? Please vote. We're voting to postpone indefinitely. Motion is unanimous, three absent. Thank you, we're down to appointments in a resolution to replace board members of Lakeshore Village's Master Community Development District. Uh, mo motion by Ms. Blanchard, seconded by. Uh, Wait, no, no, it's a motion to postpone. That's what I said. Okay, I didn't hear you say that. Motion to postpone for, uh, for a month. Seconded by Mr. Belisario, any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, no one absent. Thank you, I have one item for off the floor. Uh, resolution to amend ordinance calendar series number 16-3653 to make changes to the 2017 capital improvement budget and capital assets. I need a motion by Mr. Belisario, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Any discussion? I'm sorry, motion to open the agenda by Mr. Belisario, seconded by Ms. Blanchard. Any discussion on the motion to open the agenda? Please vote. Mr. Lorena, was it a yay vote? Motion is unanimous, three absent. Okay, I need a motion, a resolution to amend ordinance calendar series number 3653 to make changes to the 2017 gap improvement program. I need a motion to adopt. Motion. Motion by Ms. Tanner, second, Mr. Tanner, seconded by, seconded by Mr. Belisario. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, three absent. Anything else to come on the items off the floor? Mr. Dean? Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald? Mr. Thompson? Mr. Lorino? Mr. Toledano? Mr. Tanner? Mr. Groby? Mr. G Mr. Belisario? No. Ms. O'Brien, no. Uh, staff have anything? Motion by Mr. Tanner to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Groby. Please vote. Come on, vote, Tanner. Did you vote? 